Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Uh, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is a game that just came out, I think, three days ago? Uh, and as the name implies, it is like an expanded version of the Stanley Parable. Uh, that's a game that first came out in 2011, uh, and then they made like a stamp, like they made it as originally a Half-Life 2 modification, uh, but I didn't play it until they made it a standalone game, which came out in 2013. Uh, and then I came out in 2014. <laughs> and now uh, they've released this, it's kind of like uh, a remastered version, but it's also kind of like a sequel, I believe. Um, the Stanley Parable originally was a very meta game. It's like about narrative choice and about the fact that it's a video game and it's very... Uh, it's, it's very much involved in exploring those kind of ideas. Uh, there was, there was, I think still is, a free demo available on Steam, which is nothing like the actual game. It's like, uh, it's like a showcase that presents itself, hi, I'm the Stanley Parable demo, uh, here is the kind of stuff that's in the game, and then it's just a completely different experience. Uh, and that should sort of give you a vibe of what the kind of game we're playing here is. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, the original game, which I adored, I played in 2013, then I came out the year after that, uh, and now this one's just arrived, uh, and I believe it is partially, like, a sequel, partially just a remastering. Uh, there is a lot of new content according to the store page, I haven't played it yet, of course, uh, but it is definitely giving me, uh, this kind of vibe, so... Hopefully, just like uh, with the Matrix Resurrections, I'm just gonna have a fantastic time here. So uh, let's just dive in and see how we go. Um, I should mention up front: if you haven't played the Stanley Parable at all, go do it now. Uh, this is probably going to spoil things about the game. Uh, a lot of it is about the uh, exploration, the comedy of discovering the, the game's weirdness, all the strange things you can do. Uh, and I think you'll probably enjoy it more if you discover it for yourself rather than watching me do it. Um, if you've played the original game and you're not too worried about having this one spoiled for you, you can keep watching. Uh, but if you really, really want to see what's new without having someone else show it to you, then you definitely want to just go play the Ultra Deluxe game instead. Um, you can come back to this once you've already seen it, I guess, if you want to see what I think of it. <laughs> Uh, it's tricky. It's tricky to review a game where, like, the point is sort of to play it yourself and discover what it's about, you know? Um, I had a similar sort of thing with Tunic, because, yeah, uh, as much as I love that game, it's, it's hard to recommend to people because you don't want to tell them what the game is about and, and like, all the, like, secrets you're going to be discovering and all the, the still details and stuff, because that's the point of the game. Uh, they have to find them themselves. Uh, it's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky. Anyway, uh, so this is what comes up when you start the game. I haven't, like, I haven't gone any further than this yet. Um, I believe there are a lot more accessibility options in this version than there were in the original. For example, we've got subtitle options. I think the original had subtitles, but this one, I believe, also has content warnings, which I will be turning on. Uh, so let's just set that to English uh, and see how we go. Uh, as usual, when I play a new game, I don't know where my face needs to be to not cover parts of the game, so I may need to move my face around a bit. Um, have you played the Stanley Parable before? As I've been talking about for the past nearly four minutes, yes. So I'm going to say yes. Uh, I imagine if you say no, you might get like, an introduction to what you missed from the first game, but I'm going to say yes, because I have. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. Uh, I'm happy with that brightness level. I, I know they want you to, like, dial it down to... here-ish, but I, I like things to be a bit brighter so I can see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna leave it somewhere in the middle. Please enter the current time. Interesting. So this is on a, on a modern computer. I'm playing on, you know, soft Steam. It's on my gaming laptop. So it does have access to a real clock. Uh, it doesn't need to do this. So I'm curious as to why it's doing this. Uh, I will put in the time, and let's see what happens. Uh, that is the current time. So yeah, it could just read that from my computer. Accessibility access to my menu. Okay, I'm going to look at that. 
Uh, there's a loading bar underneath my face right now. You probably don't need to see that. You are playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Okay, this looks almost exactly like it did in the first game. Uh, it says Ultra Deluxe, but otherwise this is what the title screen looked like. You had a little computer that had the same menu on it, uh, and you could see your little tiny mouse cursor in there, and inside of that is another little tiny mouse cursor, and it's just very recursive, and it sort of gives you a little vibe as to what's to come. Uh, we're going to jump into the settings here. One-handed walking. Oh, cool. Hold left and right mouse buttons to walk. Controller vibration turned off. Now you can fiddle with the field of view. There are a lot more options here than the original game had, from what I remember. Uh, we are going to put on content warnings. Uh, we're going to put on these labels and things as well, just to see uh, how necessary that is. I don't know how much that's going to be required, but I want to see what the accessibility features are, so we're going to turn them on. Uh, audio, you can mess with all the volumes. A big, a big part of this game is the narrator. Uh, you're going to want to be able to change that volume separately, so it's good that you can. Uh, video, pretty standard stuff. You can fiddle around with the quality and all that. Simplified controls. Rebinds controls which actually don't require specific buttons. Oh, I see. Look, it, it uh, gives you an action button. You take that. Huh. Keybinding's jump space. That's interesting. In the original game, you could not jump. That was a major part of it. So, I say major. Like, there was an achievement for trying to jump because it, gave you, it said, hey, we disabled the ability to jump. Even though this is a Source Engine game, it was pretty funny. Uh, okay, let's dive in. Uh, again, yeah, if you don't want the experience spoiled for you, if you want to discover this for yourself, last chance, I'm about to start playing the game. <laughs> uh, begin the game. And the end is never the end is never the end is loading. This is the same loading screen from the first game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. The something Stanley that would Powerful. forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, so that introduction is more or less unchanged from the original. Uh, it has been many years since I've played it, but I don't remember anything that's, that was different. <laughs> it may be slightly different and it may be tricking me, uh, but it was, from what I recall, very similar to that. Uh... But yeah, we're playing as Stanley. Like in many Source Engine games, you can't see yourself. Uh, so it's not a big deal that you're playing as a dude or anything. <laughs> I'm pressing space right now, which is the jump button. And as you can see, nothing is happening. I just got an achievement called You Can't Jump. And then I got an achievement called Get Your First Achievement. Uh, that's on the Steam overlay, so you can't see it anyway, but it was under my face. <laughs> but yeah, you still can't jump uh, because they switched off on purpose. I can close that door. I believe most of these doors are locked. Yeah, this looks... All his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley looks... decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. 
doesn't look a whole lot different from what I remember. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Like, a decade ago, or whatever it is. <laughs> Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. But to be clear, the narrator won't say that unless you, you know, fuck around and try lots of things. The narrator responds to your actions and you are responding to the narrator's actions. It's a, it's a two-way relationship. <laughs> uh, let's start by just following the narrator's instructions for now. So far it doesn't seem a whole lot different from what I remember. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So this is the first decision point, right? Because I haven't gone through the door yet. I could choose to go through the door on the right, I could ignore the instructions, and then something else might happen. But for now, we're going to follow the narrator's instructions and see what happens. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I like this game. <laughs> oh, jeez. Room closet. Ah, so important text just shows up with this little tooltip if you turn that on. That would be more helpful if you weren't playing in, in English. If you couldn't read the words broom closet, it would probably sh it, it would show things in your native language. The original game did not have this feature, so that's a nice improvement. I believe I can open the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Yeah, I guess I will. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yeah, thus far this has not been different from the original. Maybe the visuals are a little bit sharper. And I like the accessibility changes. But that's about it, really. Bathroom. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Hades ended up doing a very similar joke to this, uh, where Zagreus finds out about Persephone because the narrator talks about how he doesn't know about Persephone. Probably inspired by this game. Twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Thus far, this seems to be the same as the original. Uh... It's possible I have to go off the path the narrator's leading me on to see new things, but I had to do that in the original game quite a lot too, so... Hmm, we'll see, we'll see. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? 
This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Ah, uh, there is an escape over there, but we're gonna go into the Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. All right, so that's the main path. Like, if you follow all the instructions of the narrator. Uh, as you can see, you can beat the game very quickly. Uh, but the point of the game, of course, is that you don't have to go that way. As you can see, it's reset us back into the office again. Um, we can try to do something else. So far, that's exactly the same as it was in the original, so I'm curious what we have to do to get different things to happen. 
All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to try... Uh... I'm going to make it to the section with two doors. It's just ahead. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. But this is, of course, the most obvious point at which you can change things. You can go through the door on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. So that leads back through to the meeting room. We're not going to do that yet. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Okay, that's not different from the original either. Where the new stuff is. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I I'm can't move right now. The oven. Oh, right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Good morning, employee 47. Press R on your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now, he's eating lunch. Now, he's going home. Now, he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought 
excited him terribly. So, uh, this path here, this is also in the original game. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Let's see what happens. I forget whether you can just wait for it. But yeah, this whole path was in the original game. So I'm still not sure what's new. I think I have to press it. It's the only way to advance. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... Okay, so that path was no different. That's what that was in the original game. Hmm. I haven't found anything new yet. I like the accessibility changes, but all of his co-workers were gone. The store page did talk about there being new content, and I haven't found any new content. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Uh, I guess I'll try some other possibilities. Um... Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> New content? What does that mean? New content. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Oh, that's that's so Stanley Parable. <laughs> okay, so the idea is you play the normal game a couple of times, and you, as soon as you start wondering where the new content is. Thank you for playing the Stanley Parable. Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, The Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. 
please step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Oh, it's exactly as ridiculously meta and silly as I was hoping. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. I can actually jump here. Used it up. There's no more jumps. The end. <laughs> is, okay. is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Another elevator. Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? It does for me. <laughs> then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. it? <laughs> You're kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, test achievement, please <laughs> ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended. And I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game? And we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks, just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Oh, hang on. This is not a racer, we're somewhere else. That's where we should have been. Something different is still happening. Like, I assume that wasn't all the new content, because obviously it wouldn't be, but... Ah, uh, yeah, so the game does uh, evolve as you play. <laughs> Psst! Stanley! Come over here! In the vent! I want to show you something! I go this way. Oh, that leads back to the normal path. Yeah, I'll take the vent. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. 
so I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. Look at the beautiful rays of light. <laughs> I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. So, to be absolutely clear, this is all new content. N none of this was in the original game. This is... We're still playing new content. <laughs> Don't forget. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap <laughs> re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Got a little ward. Little face. Hang on, that's actually for a different thing. I want to choose something. Oh, it's for The Last of Us. And I just stuck Stanley Parable over the top. <laughs> oh. Only one eye? Oh, yeah. No, that's right. Okay. Got some postcards. And we got a clock. Oh, 2013. Right, the year. <laughs> Our first kiss. My first car. The release of The Stanley Parable in 2013. Oh, this is wonderful. The original remake. Oh, look at that Firefox. I remember Firefox looking like that. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> With all those little screenshots. <laughs> Smile because it happened. Trip down memory lane. Your soundtrack. Oh. The dollar bill for some reason. I guess that's the first dollar the Stanley Parable earned or something? Stanley Parable demonstration? Yeah, the demo mentioned already, the demo is very different to the actual game. Oh yes, this is a real achievement from the original game. Uh, naturally it took quite a while for people to be able to get this achievement. <laughs> I think uh, 2013, so about five... Yeah, people only started getting this achievement in 2018. <laughs> Unachievable. It is impossible to get this achievement. That's correct. You can't get that one. <laughs> I believe um the go outside achievement for this version of the game says don't play for 10 years. So that's going to be a thing. <laughs> uh, nominee, British Academy Award for Game Innovation. Debut game. Story. New video game releasing today. Creators surprisingly down to earth. Apologies show an even effort to enroll poor. Costs hinder new tack to achieve diversity. 50% off designer hat, but a small creature owns the other half. <laughs> Business leaders pushing election of council allies. Rutgers goes from new scandal to new crisis. I don't know what that means. Is that another one? Stanley Parable deals tough choices. None of the other texts on that page is readable. One sitting up there. Oh yeah, that's Stanley. I think that's one of the endings from the original. You could fall and die, and it looked like that. In loving memory, little Stanley. Oh. <laughs> there over here. Oh, hang on, can I? Oh, I want to sit there. That looks so nice. But I can't. <laughs> Sweet on our memories and over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. 
It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now, a lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what the um, main menu looked like in the original game. Got a couple of little photos. The tasteful nostalgic. It was good. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, look, it's Portal. Ability. The two doors. The original remake. Person of the Year, Stanley. From Valley C. Stanley, of course. How does we go down here? Memory zone maintenance? Can't open that. Hmm. Guess I'm going this way. <laughs> There's a version of the game that's on like a Mac whatever instead of the original yes that's that's stanley's desk but it's got a different kind of computer at it the two colored doors up there it lots of different props and things that were in the original game that happy face button those other buttons Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. The serious room? I don't think I can get over there. There's a, some boxes in the way. Do I have to go to the maintenance room? Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh no! Oh god no! Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the <laughs> online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? <laughs> Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, this is definitely a sequel um in 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 the only way a sequel could be made for a game like the stanley parable i'm having so much fun <laughs> oh no bad reviews again oh, no the storm that one's a good review it's upside down okay let's see what this one says while the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? 
Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. Oh, dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Oh, sweetie, no. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. That's wonderful. Oh, oh. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. Losing no more listening first. to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue. And it goes <laughs> something like this. The story and the choices. Okay, yeah, I'll hit the button now. And therefore, by becoming an idiot. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumor. Press the button again, aren't I? More of a treatise, <laughs> or maybe a manifesto. <laughs> Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly, and you can tell me what you think. Okay. So my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who. You yep. <laughs> <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review, so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial. Something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the stand yeah, to press it again, but I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping... Oh, the door's gone. ...coming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's... Well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. 
I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and... Wait, how do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How oh, no. else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort, or a window, or something like... Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? I, I think I have to press the button again. Where did it go? I don't want to. Maybe just ram your way through a wall? Is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? Please, I'll take any option at all. I'm asking you to work with me here. I, we need a door. We need a door of some kind. I can work with any kind of door, as long as it can open and lead from one room to another. I, I'm going to step away for just a moment, and I'm going to try to find us a door. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do anything. Don't press the skip button. Please, please, please do not press the skip button. Just wait here. I'm, I'm not touching the controls. And don't press the skip button. Got I'm it? not pressing it. Yes. Good. I'll be right back. I have a feeling I have to press the skip button, but I'm just going to wait a little longer and see if anything else happens. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. This, this, really, this really is a sequel, and I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. It does look like nothing is going to happen unless I press that button. Uh, wait another 15 seconds or so. Just to be absolutely sure. A ladder here. It's possible I have to wait like a really long time, but then I'm ready to come back and do something else. That that's the kind of thing that the Stanley Parable would do. Uh oh. Uh. I don't really want to do that on camera, so I'm just gonna whack the button. You ready? You ready? Stanley, Stanley, St Stanley! Please don't push the button again. It's been twelve hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times, and there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button, and if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here, and more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again! I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch, and I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh my god. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea who they are. What would it ever really matter? But here I am. I'm fixating on every tiny negative thing that anyone ever says about me. The merest mention of one of my imperfections, and I become as impetulant as a child. Wild and impulsive, I can't help myself. Hit the button again. I can't stop myself from lashing out with a vengeful fury to alter and to change and to break any... Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, it's gotten dark. Oh, goodness, I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? 
Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. I'm None press of the that. button again, aren't I? I'll give it all up. I'll give up every branching path. I'll burn my story to the <laughs> ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time. That if I stop speaking, I'll slip backwards into the silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. When you press that button, you're still right there, but I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us. And I am suspicious. Okay, this is rambling again. I'm pretty sure I'm meant to press the button one more time. I can feel This feels like a bad idea though. <laughs> Hello, it's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning of rambling again. opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest... It's Oh my god. Have I been gone so long that he's not there anymore? But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned, they screamed, they gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us! It wasn't enough. They had to leave a path. The end is never 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 the end. Oh, water. Did this room get submerged again? Is that what happened? Oh, hello. Is a way out now? No, no, of course not. How would there be? Well, I can say light. Can't reach it though. Can't jump. I'm standing in the jump circle, which is not here. Oh, hello. Fairy portal two. Got some beautiful plants now. Now they're gone. Oh, 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 hello. I think the button's broken, but I can leave. Oh my god. Did all reality end while I was in there? There's nothing. 
think I've seen this future hour episode before, and it was really good. <laughs> I'm not really sure which way I should be walking. You can't run in this game. Um... Head towards the sun, maybe? Oh! Loading? Oh, we're back. Back to normal. All of this co work. Okay, so that's the end of that part. What could it mean? Stanley decided <laughs> so to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. New, new content. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Oh, gosh, we're at an hour, so I'm going to stop here. But. This is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, this game... It does let you experience, I think, all the content that was in the original Stanley Parable. Uh, you just have to not go into the new content door, I'm guessing, and you can still play the stuff that was in there, in the original game. But there's clearly a lot more. <laughs> uh, so this game is... It's essentially the only way you could have made a sequel to a game like The Stanley Parable, and they've done an incredible job. Uh, I haven't seen any content warnings yet, which is interesting. I was expecting to see some. Um, what did the what did the accessibility thing say? Content warnings to skip sections of the game that deal with suicide, trauma, and mental health issues. Um, I assume that means sections that are a bit. I guess harsher than the uh the path I already did where you have like the the mannequin wife cuz cuz that was very um that was very that was very uh fatalistic very suicidal ideation-y, so there must be something a lot more serious than that which is in the game because I have this option on huh interesting <laughs> um yeah translation labels those are nice the critical colors. Oh yeah, you can play the game with one hand as well, which is nice. You just hold the mouse buttons to walk. And yeah, you can mess with all the controls if you want. I would assume um, simplified controls stops you from having to press a bunch of different keys on the keyboard for the, the mannequin path. Okay, uh, I think... Here, if I go back out, does it notice that I... Hmm. Oh, yeah, they kind of match up. New, new content. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, anyway, yeah. If, uh you enjoy this style of game, if you enjoy games that are exploring what a game is and being really funny while they do it, then this is something you probably want to play. You... I don't know how much of the original Stanley Parable is in here, so if you haven't played the original, you might want to play that first. Uh, if you haven't played the demo, which is completely different to both of these games, you should play that first, because it's a free demo. Uh... This is definitely, uh, the most exciting of the three. There's, there's more to it. Uh, I believe all the content from the original game is in this one, but I don't know that for sure. So you may wish to play the original Stanley Parable first? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, if, if you like what you're seeing here, uh, then, yeah, there's... A whole lot more of it in this game, by the looks of things. Because, uh, yeah, we just saw, like, the new content doorway, which leads to an extremely silly path. And then we had the whole memory memory land thing. And then the skip button storyline, that was just very cool. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, this is the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I am going to, I am going to enjoy this a lot. <laughs> uh, it's definitely living up to this little meme that I was referencing. It, 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 it has that vibe to me. Um, because actually it feels very similar to Matrix Resurrections because that, that movie started out literally playing back scenes from the original Matrix and then sort of went into its own thing. And that's what we're getting again <laughs> with the Stanley Parable. Um, and that makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, yeah, like... Like, if you already knew you would love this game, you probably already clicked off this video and going to play it. Because I told you to. <laughs> uh, but if, you know, you watched the video not knowing if you'd like the game or not, and what you just saw looked like something you would enjoy, there is definitely way more of it than you just saw. There is a lot of content in this game. I am absolutely certain of it. So if this looks like something that you would enjoy, definitely play it. Maybe play the regular Stanley Parable first. Uh, I might just check, actually. Is the regular Stanley Parable still in the store, or does it just give you Ultra Deluxe now? Uh... Hello, Steam. Let me have a little look at you. Uh, no, not properties. I need to click on the game. Click on the store page. Uh, yes, the original game is already on the store. So... Uh, it's, sorry, it's still on the store. So you can go back and buy the first one. Um, it may be that Ultra Deluxe has all the content that's in the original, in which case just get Ultra Deluxe. Obviously. Uh, and just, like, avoid the doors that say new content until you're ready. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, I, I adored the original game, I am, in, I am adoring what they've done to make a, a pseudo-remake sequel new game that is also the same game, but also isn't, and the end is never the end, is never the end, is never the end. I, I love the Stanley Parable, and I am delighted that there is more of it. And they created essentially a sequel, which is also a remake in exactly the only way they could. And it's perfect. <laughs> so yeah, if, if this looks like a game that vibes with your, your sense of humour, that vibes with the way you like to think about games and art and choice and all of those things, then play this game. <laughs> Definitely play the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Uh, and, like, even if the game was just looked at, like, it doesn't immediately vibe with you, if it doesn't seem like your thing, play the demo. Play the demo. Like, it's, it's going to be a different game, but it's also really fun and really good, and it's a free demo, so... Definitely play that, at least. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, uh, that's the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Which, yeah, it's, it's the same game, it's a remake of the same game, it's a remaster, but it's also a sequel, and it's an incredible sequel, and I'm so excited. And I'm going to play it so much off camera, you don't have no idea. <laughs> um, so, thank you for watching, if you stuck around. If you've already left, you can't hear me say thank you for watching, so there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope if this looks like your kind of game, you get into it. I, I have spoiled one of the parts by just playing it on camera there. But there's definitely, like, I, I, I know Stanley Parable, there will be so many more parts than what you just saw. So, like, yeah, if this looks like something you'll enjoy, go play it. Play this game. You will have an incredible time with it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye! <laughs>